Amen. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you. Father, we magnify you. We thank you, precious Holy Spirit. 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 Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, it's better now. Father, that is what we need this morning, oh God. We need the empowerment, oh God. We need the We need you, oh God, to carry us. We need you, oh God, to lead us. We need you, oh God, to be the one that moves us, oh God. Um, through the rivers of life, through the waters of life. This morning, we are asking that your precious Holy Spirit will just rain down upon us this morning. We ask that you will carry us, oh God. We ask, Father, that you will be the one that gives us direction. You'll be the one that gives us strength. You'll be the one that gives us enlightenment, oh God. Even as we go through this morning and we go through this time of prayer, Holy Spirit, we are asking that you will come down and you'll be the force of heaven, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Amen. we just dedicate the entire call into your hands we dedicate our entire time oh god of prayer and communion with the father we ask precious holy ghost that indeed you would carry us that indeed you would carry us that indeed you will carry us that you will come down from heaven oh god and you will convert this entire zoom session into a time of god's presence that you will convert it oh god into one meeting one fellowship one communion with god that father that your spirit will just come down and sit here with us, that your spirit will come down and um, convert the entire time um, into a meeting with God and into an encounter with the angelic host in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will purify us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will sanctify us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will purge us this morning. If there be anything in our hearts, if there be any actions, if there be any deeds, oh God, that we might have engaged in, Father, that is contrary to your way, that is contrary to your word, that is contrary to your work. God, we ask that in the name of Jesus, that you will feel you, you will cleanse us this morning. In the name of Jesus, Father, we present our our hearts before you. Can you just present yourself before God and just ask of the Lord that if there be Jesus, anything that is standing, in the, Lord, standing in, the in the way of his will or standing in the way of his desire concerning you, that this morning the Lord will cleanse you, that the Lord will purify you, that the Lord will purge you. If there is anything you just want to lay before God or anything you want to confess to the Lord, this morning I want you to do it and I want you to just say, Father, I am here to encounter you 
you. I am here to touch you. I am here to meet with you. Oh God, all I want is your presence. All I want, oh God, is your truth. All I want is an impartation from you. Therefore, Holy Spirit, I just lay my heart at your altar and I just ask that your fire will come down and it will touch my heart. Your fire will come down and it will purify my heart. Your fire will come down, oh God, and it will cleanse my heart. It will take away from me, oh God, any action of hell and darkness and deception. I pray that you will reveal truth to me this morning. I pray that you will show me, oh God, that you will show me this morning what your will is for me, that you will show me this morning what it is that you want me to do and what it is that you need me to achieve, that you will reveal to me this morning, oh God, the path that you want me to go, that if there be any seed, oh God, of rebellion in my heart, any seed of rebellion in my heart, anything that rebels against you, anything that rebels against your own heart, anything that rebels against your own will. Father, I ask that in the name of Jesus, you will take it out this morning. Oh, take it away, 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 take it away. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. You know, while we're praying just now, and I just started praying and saying, God, if there be anything in my heart that rebels against you, if there be anything in my heart that contends against you, um, I just began to see like a tree um, planted in the heart of people. Wow. And... Um, I, I, and I began to just um, hear the Spirit of God speaking about every system of rebellion, every established system of rebellion in the hearts of his people. And I feel like the Spirit of God just wants to uproot from inside of our hearts any established system of rebellion mm-hmm. inside of us. And the thing about established systems of rebellion is that you often don't know it, you often don't see it, it is not obvious, it is just there inside of you. It may be a, a defense mechanism by which you have walked for years. There may be a defense mechanism by which you have warred for years. It may be the way that you have um, your automated response to problems or to where you are told, oh, you're doing something wrong or you're getting something wrong. It may just be your automated response uh, and you have held on to it for years to the point that even when God is working in you and God is moving in you and God is speaking to you, um, you are not even able to know when you are rebelling against God. And I just feel like the Lord wants to uproot every system of rebellion and the way it works is you know it is connected to culture it is connected to habits um it is connected to the traditions of life um it is connected to your strengths and so all of it is just intertwined and the moment you begin to act you don't even know that that's what you're doing and so you you've become a person that is never able to come into the fullness of God is never able to birth the full instructions of God is never able to manifest the fullness and the oneness of the Lord. And so things like alignment with the spirit um, is hard with you sometimes. And you don't even know why. You don't even know that you are um, giving off or you are performing some actions that are rebelling against the seed of God's destruction in your heart. So let us pray this morning that, Father, every system I have built, knowingly or unknowingly, um, that I activate knowingly or unknowingly, any altar of rebellion that has been established in my heart that I did not even know was there and it makes it impossible for me to fully align myself with you in every season my God I ask that you pull down this altar my God I ask that you take down this altar my God I ask that you uproot this altar in the name of Jesus can you make that prayer for yourself every systemic rebellion that exists within me that exists within my mind space that exists within my soul space that exists within my spirit space Father, that you would take it out in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would put it in the name of Jesus. That I may be able to walk with you. That I may be able to follow you. That I may be able to, to stay steady in you. In the name of Jesus. 
Rakate. Father, begin to deconstruct these systems, oh God. Begin to deconstruct these systems. Begin to deconstruct these systems, oh God. Begin to pull them down. Begin to remove them, oh God. One after the other, for my Jesus, I pray that you will remove them, oh God. Wherever they are rooted, they must soul, in my mind, in my spirit, in my body. Let the light of truth, let it permeate them, oh God. Let them not be able to stand anymore in the name of Jesus. For every part of me is in complete submission to you. Every part of me is in complete submission to you. Oh, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Every systemic rebellion, Mashom Bragadela, Mashom Bragadela, Mashom Bragadela, every systemic rebellion, Maros Katela Basu Telebarakate, that wrestles, that contains, that fights against you, O God. E Kabashonda Rabakarabahaya, E Raboko Santa Lebarakasete, in the Beleni Brakatosa, Kaba 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 Shaba Roko Sonde Pregadele Soko Parade. It will not stand in the name of Jesus. Ora Baba 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 Kasubra Hede. Ora Bashita La Baraka Boko Seke de Baraka Bosokara Baba Bahara La Bashanda La Baha. You will not stand against the Shanda Baraha Sada La Baha. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Jesus, forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. I stood this morning, oh God, we declare that, Father, our hearts are consecrated to you. Father, we declare that our minds are consecrated to you. God, we declare that our spirits are dedicated to you. Amen. Lord, we declare that no other idol, no other idol exists inside of us. Amen. We dethrone them this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We dethrone them this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, precious God. Thank you, Father. Precious Holy Spirit, we thank you. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we say, make me your vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring you wine out. Make me your vessel, make me an offering, make me what. You want me to be. I came with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring you wine out of me. Yes, Lord. Father, we just ask for the new wine. We ask for the fresh outpouring. Amen. In Jesus' name. My book that's on the couch. Amen. 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 Um, you can mute your microphones, please. You can mute your microphones. Um, so yesterday we we started we started praying and teaching. Um, we continued from where we started two days ago. Two days ago, we're talking about um the attack of um compromise and two days ago we, we begin that we began that journey focusing more on um the garden of eden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and all of those things and then we moved gently into david on his rooftop and you know yesterday i continued from there but yesterday as i was talking about 
um, David on his rooftop, I focused on he saw Bathsheba and I began to explain to you the concept of seeing and, um, and the word mare and what it means to mare a thing. And, you know, I began to show you different parts of scriptures when people saw and, you know, what mare means, you know, to see um, beyond what is obvious and to see the value and to see the possibility and to see the strength in a thing. And I began to explain that, but the problem with mare, the, the times it has occurred in scriptures is that many times when people mare things, they wanted to take it for themselves. Um, they wanted to stretch their hand and eat of it. But uh, yeah, so yesterday we began to talk about the boundaries of sight, the boundaries of vision and how um, there's a responsibility that comes with vision and it's the responsibility of submission you know and we began to speak about how God is um, calling us into this place where we must you know hold on to the standard you know of sight and how in the realm of the spirit the role that vision plays and how everything you see you know or just because you can see a thing doesn't mean you can have it and just because you have enlightenment doesn't mean you can address the matter so we looked a lot about at governance we looked a lot about um, boundaries we looked a lot about um you know just the steady path in the realm of the spirit where people are kept safe and where people fall out of place you know so um all of that and we prayed in line with sight we played prayed in line with vision we prayed in line with understanding we, we prayed in line or you know of we come from uh, you know that god will help us not to compromise based on what we see you know and the lord the spirit of god began to speak to us about people who had who were facing the consequences of compromises they had made you know simply because of mare you know the things they saw and how they did not handle um the situation properly and it has led to their destruction and what could have been for promotion has become the very thing that has brought them destruction you know we're looking at all of that and you know that that the holy ghost just took us on this windy road and you know we made prayers we repented we asked god for strength we asked god for direction and all of that good stuff so um throughout yesterday as i stayed with the lord in prayer there was just a, a heaviness on my heart you know throughout the day and um it did not lift until about 6 6 p.m but you know throughout the day i i just stayed i canceled my meetings i stayed in with god stayed in my bedroom you know just doing all the things that i could do pray um send a message read send a message you know just stay with the lord and it was the heaviness in my heart because I, I just kept feeling like um father we are engaging with you and you are engaging with us on prayer ring. yet i feel lord like there is a distance here i feel lord like you know we haven't touched the fullness of it yet um and i felt like the lord and i kept hearing myself say in the place of prayer jesus come closer jesus come closer jesus come closer and it's almost like when somebody is saying something to you and you're like can you come closer i can't hear you you know i can i kind of you know just hear myself saying come closer come closer and it almost felt like you know there was something that the lord wants to say there's something that the lord wants to reveal there's something that the lord you know wants to fill us with there's something that the lord wants to pour into us wants to um robe us with wants to cover us with wants to envelop us with and i felt like we needed to push and to break and to enter into that thing you know and i just i just felt like a like like the not the woman herself but like the baby in the birth canal that is trying to push and to break out and to break forth and to come into this new life you know and you know i stayed in that place of prayer but in the midst of that and with the midst of the lord laying that on my heart um one thing that uh okay before before i go into the one thing that the lord kept repeating before going to that can we just make that a prayer that lord jesus whatever it is the fullness of what you want to bring to us in prayer reign help us God to come into it. Can we make that prayer this morning? That Father, we perceive that there is more. Lord, we perceive that there is more. Lord God, help us to come into the fullness. Help us to come into the fullness. Help us, oh God, to enter into every single thing that you have for us. Because, oh God, whatever it is that heaven has designated for us in this season of prayer reign, Lord Jesus, let us have it. Whatever heaven has designated, whatever heaven has set for us, 
Lord Jesus, let us come into you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we just ask that you will open the windows of heaven unto us, that you will open the floodgates of heaven unto us, that whatever, oh God, you agree with the host of heaven to be poured out to us during the season of prayer, rain, my God, let it be let down upon us in the name of Jesus, in every dimension, in every way, in all its characteristics, Jesus, let us receive of it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, let us come into it. Let us come into it. Let us come into it. Oh, Baraba, say the Bereka, send the Labaruskata, Ila Manto Kelaba, Shanda Barakate, Ilo to Boraka, Sande Kere, Bakura, Basanda Labata. Let us come into the fullness of it, Jesus. Let us come into the fullness of it, oh God. My God, may so Balika to the Barasa Keta, La Baba, 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 Sheila Baroko. My God, I want all of it. My God, I want all of it. My God, I want all of it. Empty out upon me your will for this season, your will for this prayer time, your will for this for this time in January, this time of waiting on you, this time of praying. My God, empty out upon me the fullness of it, oh God, the totality of it. Let there be nothing missing. Oh God, Marose Kelepa Shuda Barakata, Ela Bora Catela Baros Catele Baraka Sanda Labate, Ile Bashanda Bale Capo Roboshanda Baroko Sanda, E Capo Tula Catabara Catole Cosole Batalade, O Rabashola Barabaco Sele Barusa Tele Kereba Sunda. Lord Jesus, we wait, we wait on you, O God, we wait on you, O God, we wait on you, O God, we wait on the fullness of your spirit, we wait on the outpouring of your spirit. We wait, oh God. We wait, oh God. Marane Mosonde Bakara Bashanda Ila Baso Klenemetu Karabasu Prahada. We wait for the outpouring of your spirit. Aro Bashu Karabasalabata. We wait for the release from heaven. Ela Bo Karabashu de Brakatala. If nothing missing, nothing but broken her. We wait for the shalom of the completeness of his work inside of us. Ela Nabo Kore Bashanda Barakastela. We wait for the influx of grace. We wait for the inflow of strength. We wait for the fullness of revelation. Every single thing that you have designated unto us in this season and in this time, oh God. Let it be released from heaven in the name of Jesus, Ela Baracuse Cadabarasa Taylor, to decree and to declare that all our answers that let down upon us, huh? nothing that the Lord has given to us shall be stuck in the heavens. Huh? There is a release, 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 there is a release in the name of Jesus, that Bota Capala Day, of everything that you have given to us. Huh? In the name of Jesus, Marada Calabasole Caparacas, Hotel Catalaba. We ask for the emptying out, Masuda Barakata, Luske La Pata, Era Papa Papa Papa, Masute Keparusa Tela, Nama Teka Dala, Bosch Catalabate, Akaba Sandele Barakasuka Parade, and the Barakata La Basombe Catalada, she Bobo 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 Kore Basanda La Bata, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. My God, we bless you because there is an emptying out from heaven. Every promise, every prophecy, everything that you have released, oh God, unto us, we declare that they are ours in the name of Jesus. Oh, Pasande Barakosha Paradeka Satan, Reba Kota Leklanda Basukle Tele. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I see in the realm of the Spirit, the Lord is showing me um, somebody's mother. Somebody's mother. There's a person's mother. Um, you're on this prayer call. And your mother, what I see is she's a rich woman. She's an influential woman. But she is suffering from depression. 
very intense depression to the point where she has even um, considered suicide different times. I see her dress, sitting at her dresser and I see pills in her hand in front of her. And I see this woman crying, crying because she's thinking to herself, what will happen if I kill myself? What, how would it be for my children? What will my children say? How will my children feel? But at the same time, she is oppressed by these demonic spirits that are telling her, you know, you are empty, you are hopeless you should leave this world um i i don't i don't know what this woman is into and i don't know if she was ever in politics i have no idea but but she's she's an influential woman um but but she's suffering right now and there is a part of her that believes um in this by is a, it is the consequences of things that she has done in the past but even in this moment i see jesus walking through her room door and i see jesus walking to her and her dresser and i see the lord putting his hand around this woman and bringing consolation and rest to her Amen. consolation Amen. and rest to her Amen. and so right now Amen. in the name of jesus i rebuke that demonic spirit Amen. i rebuke that suicidal spirit Amen. i rebuke that spirit of depression i say let her, and let her go now in the name of Amen. jesus Amen. i command the power of that demon to be broken and i release the power of the holy spirit and i declare that this soul is saved this soul is rescued this soul is delivered her life will not end in shame the testimony of her life will not be that she came and she took her own life but i decree and i declare that the hand of god is upon you from today and jesus brings you consolation and rest your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven, sins are forgiven. by the blood of Jesus. I Amen. declare that your sins are forgiven. Let there be a worship, worship, the worship, the worship of your soul by reason of these words of God that we speak this morning. Let there be a worship in your soul. She has cried out to God. She has repented. She has begged the Lord. She has asked the Lord for all kinds of things. But she's like, why am I still in this depression? Why am I still in this state? Right now in the name of Jesus, I command the oppression of hell to break off you now in Jesus name you are free and I release the shalom of God over you and I command the darkness to dissipate and light light come over you in the name of Jesus I release the joy of heaven into your heart I release the joy of heaven into your soul I command the pillars of peace to be established around you mm. i create the boundaries of the righteousness of god which is a gift from god let the boundaries of righteousness be set around you today i create a covering around you in the name of jesus and i decree that your oppression ends because when they come they will see the fire of god that surrounds you in the name of jesus and i say to you your mother is free your mother is released, your mother is delivered, and you will have no portion in the oppression of your mother. You will have no portion in the oppression of your mother in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I severe the cords. I severe every demonic cord. I severe every demonic umbilical cord that Satan is creating in the realm of the spirit between you and your mother. And he's saying, as surely as she's alive, you would also suffer what she suffers. Today, I severe that cord by the name of Jesus. And I command the fire of the Holy Spirit to completely consume that cord. We severe it, we severe it, we severe it, we burn it in the name of Jesus. We decree and we declare that you have no connection with any demonic thing. You have no connection, you have no connection with that previous suffering because she's released and she's delivered. You are also released and you are delivered. They have said to you that you are also bipolar. They have said to you that you are also in depression. They have said to you you are also suicidal. I rebuke that demonic words, those demonic words that are hovering over your head I command that dark cloud to dissipate in the name of Jesus and I release the fire of the Holy Ghost I decree and I declare that you are free you are free, you are free, you are free you are delivered in the name of Jesus Jesus of the consolation of God that I have received, I send also to you. Mare 
otoke rika sute libra anteke rego sotala zibro no bokoto bre eke ke 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 kura baka sukre kete lukasata you are kept within the cup the capsule of the goodness and the mercy of god elama to saleba ashanda baroko sanda era kapoto soko para na bateka na basoda in the name of jesus in the name of jesus la bosha tela kavade barosa leka paluka sika la batula kasakatela da therefore in jesus name we discontinue the cycle and the loop that hell had created Amen. we discontinue it in the name of jesus mashadava eka bashala vele vekele masobra esa kela batala deska era bo shatala krene bo sokle ete velekete arama kose klene matusa kabara hase tala kabaha in the name of jesus you know i see somebody on the call and i see some altars of your father's house hear me this is a different one and it is an altar of a of a of a spirit and a god or a goddess um that that the forefathers had served and even though your your parents had tried to break out of that um but they also believe that at every stage and I, and i see the the number 15 it feels like almost every 15 years it comes and it requires of every generation um uh, an uh, a sacrifice of some sort and it, it, you have been afraid because they have said to you that yes so we are now christians so but this thing we have never been able to shake it off because every 15 years it rises up and it comes to take and if a generation does not satisfy it you know it will come for you it will come for your mind it will come for your sanity you know and you have been afraid that it is about to come for you i need you to hear me by the power of the holy spirit the bible says they nothing shall you be terrified of your adversaries for it is a sign to them of their perdition and it is a sign to you of your victory today i rebuke the fear by which this the morning spirit has operated in your lineage mm-hmm. today i cancel i cancel i cancel it in the name of jesus mm-hmm. i break the hold of that fear i break it off you in mm-hmm. jesus name and i decree mm-hmm. and i declare that in the name of jesus you are severed from that lineage in mm-hmm. the realm of the spirit you are completely cut off from those consequences i say it shall not come near you because mm-hmm. the bible decrees that whosoever jesus of nazareth has set free is free indeed you are free in the name of jesus you are free in the name of jesus i say to you daughter of the king son of the king you are free in the name of jesus for who can dare to raise a decree when the lord has decreed another thing who can contend with the decree of god i say to you affliction shall not arise a second time Amen. affliction shall not arise in your generation Amen. so i need you to speak to yourself and declare that i have no part in it Amen. i have no part in it i have no part in it i have no part in it i am severed from that life cycle i am broken off that chain i am standing under the watering of god i am standing under the protective custody of zion i am not a part of that demonic system of oppression and op pressure in the name of Jesus i have broken loose i am broken loose i have broken loose like a bird that is let out of the snare of the fowler i have broken loose in the name of Jesus amen ala beko sole baraba bashanda ke pasuka la bata shabela kupa karaba sote kele batula kasaka thank you jesus thank you lord Thank you Father for multiple deliverance is going on this morning. Multiple deliverance is going on this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Leboro kosada baraka se karabasada lekata. Aba ba 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 ba. And I hear the spirit of God saying that they have said that whosoever does not align with this, whosoever does not service this altar, dies of a strange sickness. And it's a sickness in your lineage. It has shown up at different times in different people. And they have said that it is a sick almost like a family secret and they've said it is those who don't subscribe to this they die of this strange sickness so the way the public sees it is that is a genetic disorder in your lineage but you know that the conversation inside of the family is that whosoever does not subscribe to this dies of a strange ailment i say to you you will live and you will not die amen you will live and you will not die amen you are the one that breaks the chain you are the testimony of the power of god amen. i say to you 
you will live and you will not die. Amen. There is no space for that infirmity inside of you. Yes. I Amen. need you to believe in the superiority of the word of God. Believe in the superiority of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I need you to believe in it. 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 The superiority of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. Please be. All right. So this morning, while also while I was um, in prayer yesterday and, you know, just pressing in my spirit and I felt like there is more, there is more, there is more. I, I kept hearing the Lord speaking about the wilderness and speaking about our crossing over. Um, but I, I, I just had him focusing on the wilderness because there is a revelation of the wilderness that I have. And I just kept feeling that the spirit of God wanted us to teach about the wilderness as it connects with compromise, you know, um, because we'll be speaking about the attack of compromise. And I just felt like the spirit of God uh, wanted to highlight that a little bit, but wanted to highlight it in terms of um, being in a season of wilderness and you know the thing that the Lord wanted me to bring first of all is to help some of us redefine what we call wilderness experience um, and so we, we go to Genesis 16 and in Genesis 16 from verse 7 um, so this is the whole story of um, Sarah and Abraham and you know Sarah's maid servant and the story about how she um, um, her, Sarah gave her maid servant Hagar to Abraham because Sarah could not conceive a child and um, Abraham, um, Hagar went in or Abraham went in to be with Hagar and Hagar conceived a child and the moment Hagar conceived the Bible says that she despised her mistress she began to look down on her mistress she began to treat Sarah wrongly and here is Sarah um, in the midst of this situation I can imagine how Sarah feels I can imagine how sad she is she's thinking you know what I don't want Abraham to be without a hair I don't want Abraham to be without a child so she goes ahead and she takes this risk with her servant and then she the servant conceives and the servant has a child now and the servant despises her and the servant looks down on her and um, um, um Sarah is, is is feeling bad because Sarah is the she she knows that Abraham has got a covenant with God she she has seen her husband walk in the supernatural she has seen her husband have encounters with God she has seen her husband host angels she knew that there was something upon this family lineage and in her own bid to help God and in her own bit to facilitate, you know, what the Lord has promised. She goes ahead and she makes this mistake of stretching her hand to bring a pseudo solution um, that does not carry the righteousness of God. And so here we say we are sitting in regret and sitting in pain and sitting in shame and, and saying to herself, oh God, what have I done? You know, what is the mistake I have done? You know, why have I gone ahead and, and gone ahead of God? And she says to Abraham, Abraham, it is your fault. It is you that is permitting this lady to treat me this way. We both know that it is because of you that I have stretched my hand to do this. And Abraham says to her, what business do I have with your servant? She's your maid servant. Whatever you want to do with her, whatever you want to do to her, do with her. And Sarah begins to treat this um, lady badly. It was so bad that Hagar could no longer stay in, um, in the house. And Hagar decided to, to leave, to run away um, from the house. And Abraham and Hagar went into the wilderness. So in verse 7, we see this whole thing going on where it says, Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to shore. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from? Where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. 
It says, and the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are with child and you shall bear a son and you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, have I, have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Be'er Lahe Rohi, Rohi, Rohi. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Beret. So Hagar born Abraham a son, and Abraham named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham. So um, here is the story of Hagar, and she runs into the, to, into the wilderness, and she's in the wilderness, and the Bible says that the angel of the Lord comes to Hagar, and the angel of the Lord says to Hagar, Hagar, where are you going? Hagar, um, the, 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 the servant of Sarai, that's how the, the angel addresses her, you know, because first of all, the angel identifies her, the angel knows her, but the angel asks her, he says, um, where are you going? Where are you coming from? He asks her two questions. Where are you coming from and where are you going? Where are you coming from and where are you going? going now I, I want you to understand something the moment you are in a season of wilderness these are two questions that you need to be able to answer where are you coming from and where are you going because the season of wilderness is usually a season um where if i before we go on let me define what wilderness is to you so the word that was used um in, in, in this you know, is the word midbar. When she went into the wilderness is the word mid, midbar. And it is the word M-I-D-B-A-R. Now, often than not, um, people would describe um, it as a desert, but a uh, wilderness is not the same as a desert. The word for desert is the word negev. N-E-G-E-V is the word negev. And this means desert or dry place. Um, but, you know, um, the wilderness is different. So the wilderness, sometimes, you know, it could be a desert and sometimes it may not be a desert. Um, but a, a wilderness in itself is different from a desert, which is a dry place. Um, a wilderness... Um, the, root, the root word for the word midbar, M-I-D-B-A-R, midbar, which is the meaning of wilderness in Hebrew. But the root word of midbar is the word debar. And the word debar, D-I-B-A-R, means to speak. So a wilderness, when you see wilderness in scripture, it doesn't necessarily mean desert, which is Negev. Negev is a dry place or, you know, a desert. But Midbar gets its roots from the word Debar. And the word Debar means to speak, you know. So basically, um, a, a Midbar or a wilderness is really the place where God speaks. So many times people say, oh, I'm just in a wilderness season. And when they say that they are thinking about dryness, they are thinking about money, they are thinking about how broke they are. But that's not what a meat bar is. That's not what a wilderness means. And you begin to look at the scripture and you see that the first time that we see the word meat bar used is in relationship to Abraham's servant, is relationship to a woman, is relationship to somebody who is broken, is relationship to somebody who feels unseen, is a relationship to somebody who is rejected and maltreated is relationship to somebody who is the lowest of the low in society that's the first that we actually see the word um, midbar used and you know so she's in this situation where she is broken she feels sad she feels dejected and she moves away from that place and she's trying to run into safety and she's trying to run into liberation and she's trying to survive some way and God takes her into a midbar and you see there are many people and many of us in life Life, where we come into a situation like that, where we come into a time where um, we are encountering some kind of opposition, we're encountering some kind of trouble. And what the Lord does is that he shifts us away from our problem. He shifts us away from our trouble. He shifts us away from our oppression and he moves us into a season of midbar. So the season of midbar is not the season of solution as it were. It's not the season where you arrive at the fullness of the promise, but the season of midbar, like the children of Israel in the wilderness, 
was like an in-between season, was like a time where you haven't sorted out the problem, you haven't arrived at the solution, but you are no longer in the heat of the problem, or you are no longer in the middle of it. It is the time where you are making a move and you are giving the best efforts that you can to be liberated from a thing, and you come into a mid-bar situation. And the thing about mid-bars is that it is a time of isolation, it is a time of separation, it is a time where you most times you feel alone and you feel like you can't explain this to people. So people look at you from the outside. You are not in a negative. You are not in a desert or in a dry place, but you are in a mid bar. You can feel it in yourself that you are in a time of separation. You are in a time where um, you may be going through a pain. You may be going through a struggle. You may be going through something that others may not necessarily see um, because you can't explain it to them. You can't explain that this is not the fullness. You can't explain that this is not what you are. You are truly longing for you can't explain to them that this is not a solution but you know that there is more you know that there is a future and like hey guy you are trying to journey out of the oppression of sarai and you are trying to journey into your your promised land like the children of israel so when the people, the Amalekites and co, when they looked at the children of Israel, what they would have seen was the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud, and they literally saw food fall from heaven for these people. And they and every time they saw the children of Israel, they saw their clothes look new, they saw their shoes look new, and they said to themselves from the outside, my goodness, these people are powerful. Their God has helped them. Their God has sorted them out. You know, look at them going through the miraculous and going through the supernatural. But the children of Israel were in, in a Midbar, those who looked from the outside saw the power and the grace and the help and the glory of God. But they who were inside the Midbar situation, what they were experiencing was the feeling of, um, of insufficiency and the, and the feeling of dissatisfaction and the need to come out of this, of this dry place and to arrive at the fullness and the promise of God. And I sense in my spirit that a lot of people who are going through a Midbar career season and, and you are going through a season where you know that, you know what, this is not where I am supposed to be. You have made the move to leave it, but you have not come into your Canaan. You have not come into your promised land. You have not come into your fullness, and you are in the mid bar. But when people look at you from the outside, they are like, my goodness, God is good to you. God is taking care of you. God is making all these things happen. So there's a pillar of fire. There's a pillar of cloud. There is manna. There is all these miraculous things going on around you, but there is a dissatisfaction in your heart because you want to arrive at the fullness a midbar, a wilderness situation. But I need you to remember a scripture that God said to the children of Israel. He said, listen, he says, I, the Lord, I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out of the narrow place. I brought you out of captivity. I brought you out of oppression. I brought you out of the hand of the enemy. He said, and I led you into the wilderness so that I may try you, so that I may bring out and show you what is in your heart. He said, I, the Lord, I did this. I did this so that I may show you what is in the heart. He says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, Deuteronomy 8 verse 2. And you shall remember the Lord your God who led you all the way these 40 years in the midbar, in the wilderness, to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not, whether you will compromise or not, whether you would give in to what the enemy wants or not, whether you will add a little here or a little there. Remember, we're talking about the attack of compromise. Yeah. It says, I led you through a meat bar, number one, so that I may humble you, number two, so that I will test you, and number three, um, so that I will reveal in what is in your heart to know whether you would keep my commandments or not. A midbar. A midbar is a place of humbling. A midbar is a place of testing. And a midbar is a place of revealing what is in the heart of a person. I went through a midbar last year and I could not find definition to it because people who looked from the outside said to me, but Isi, you have a miracle. But Isi, this is the supernatural intervention of God. But I could not explain to them the, 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 the dryness, the loneliness, the isolation, the feeling of insufficiency and a lack of arrival at the fullness of God. I could not explain it in words. And so at some point I began to look like I wasn't grateful to God, but that wasn't what was going on. And I, want, I was in this season and I kept feeling 
feeling like, God, I need you to make sense of this in my spirit. Why can't I make sense of it? Why don't I feel, feel fully liberated? Why don't I feel like I have fully broken the chain of this off me? It is because I was in a mid bar. It was because I was in a Mibah. Me, me and you see, like I said to you in the beginning, the thing about a Mibah is that it, the root word is the word the bar. And the word the bar is to speak. And I'm going to get there. The word the bar is to speak. But I need us to just sit on this scripture on Deuteronomy 8 verse 2, just a little bit and pray with it. He says, I the Lord. He says, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years led you all the way these 40 years. There is somebody in a mid-bar situation and you have forgotten the leadership of God. You have forgotten that it is the hand of the Lord that has brought you thus far. I'm not talking about, Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. Prayers of thanksgiving, no. I am talking about a remembrance of the step-by-step -step leadership of God. I am talking about your spirit being able to note the processes of God, the systematic deliverance and liberation of God. I am talking about you remembering the days of little instructions, God leading you a little bit here and a little bit there. I am talking about you remembering the way God gave you audacity and courage to be able to make the necessary move. I am talking about you remembering how God confronted Pharaoh and how God led you out of the captivity of Pharaoh with signs and with wonders. I am calling for a holy remembrance in your soul. I am calling for a holy remembrance in your spirit. Now I want you to speak to yourself and begin to say, remember oh my soul. Remember oh my spirit. Do not forget his benefits. Remember the goodness of God. Remember the leadership of God. Remember the ways in which God has led you oh my soul. Do not not forget the hand of the Lord. Do not forget the crossing of the Red Sea. Remember, remember. Can you make that prayer? Because you see, if a man forgets the dealings of God, if a man forgets the leaders of God, there is a tendency for you to stray in the future because you would have forgotten the efforts and the sacrifices that has brought you to where you are. Can you pray this morning? Now begin to speak to your soul and begin to speak to your mind and begin to speak to your spirit and say, remember ye the way of the Lord. Remember the Lord your God. The remember the way in which he has led you to the wilderness. Remember the way in which God has delivered you consistently. Remember the way in which God has shown up for you. Remember how easy the days in which you prayed and the days in which you cried. Oh, Lord, God, you must remember. Remember how God met you. 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 How he carried you in his spirit, how he shielded and led you, how he instructed you, built you up, all his miracles. Remember all that the help me that it is your hand that is brought how you have to the 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 Oh, Father, help me remember the name of God. The name of Jesus, help me remember the day, Father, that when I was born, 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 I that was for somebody remember remember Remember, oh my soul, remember the goodness of God. Yes. 
Remember the miraculous interventions of the king. Remember the day the Lord did not permit the enemy to cause your name to be dragged in the mud. Remember how the Lord stood up for you. Remember how the Lord set you free. Remember how the Lord provided for you. Remember, oh my soul. Remember the nourishment of God in the dry place, oh my spirit. Remember. He says, remember how he led you this 40 years. He says he led you through the mid bar, but it was to humble you. It was to teach you how to come into subjection and how to come into the governance of his spirit. That was the, that was the purpose of him leading you that way. He said to also test you and to know what is in your heart, whether or not you will compromise. I need you to understand that the wilderness is a good place. I need you to understand that the wilderness is a place that refines you. The wilderness is a place that brings you into um, alignment with the Lord. It's a place that brings you into subjection to God. The wilderness is not necessarily a dry place. It is a place where people come into um, the necessary authority that their destiny needs to fulfill everything that God has locked in it. So here is Joseph, the son of Jacob, and you know he has this dreams he has these visions he has all those things that god says to him and joseph is bragging to his brothers about his coat joseph is bragging about his dreams joseph is telling on his brothers to his father joseph is you know revealing everything he's proud he's a bit arrogant and you know he's a bit inconsiderate of the emotions of other people you know towards his special selection and joseph is all of these things and then the lord takes joseph and leads him into a midbar for a season of 10 years so that while joseph is in the is in the midbar the Lord begins to train him and the Lord begins to humble him and the Lord begins to reveal what is in his heart or what is not in his heart to test him and Joseph then begins to realize that it is not enough to have a dream, it is not enough to have a vision, it is not enough to be called by God, it is not enough to be anointed as king you must be tested, you must be tried you must show that you will not compromise before you come into the authority that, that, that is supposed to flow out of your dream, before you are given the power that is supposed to come from your dream because if joseph had been the way that he was if he had not gone to the midbar and if he had not arrived at the testing and proven worthy by god what would have happened is joseph would have come into power and he would have used his power to destroy his brothers he would have used his power to keep his brothers in captivity he probably would have killed them when he came into power and the problem with joseph making such a situation is that Joseph would have been killing Judah, killing Reuben, killing all these people through which Jesus eventually came from. So God understood. So in as much as God blessed jo Joseph, in as, God, as much as God anointed Joseph, in as much as God called Joseph and Joseph's destiny was important in the grand scheme of things, yet Joseph needed to be refined. Otherwise, the decisions that Joseph will make will eventually bring more hurt to the kingdom than good to the kingdom. Joseph would have destroyed um, the lineage of Christ. Joseph would have used his power to destroy that which God wants to build so yes he was raised as a savior but that was something that he was anointed as but joseph needed to come into the personality and the nature of a savior so joseph went to a midbar and a midbar is a season that 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 that, that redefines you and builds you up and i don't know who it is that is going to a midbar and you have misinterpreted what the lord is doing but i need you to understand that the lord is pre-qualifying you for that which he had promised you before for. That is the purpose of the wilderness. So here is, um, and you see, because of the root word, the bar, people will say, oh, I'm in a wilderness. I can't hear God. I can't see anything. No, a bar means to speak. So the wilderness is actually the place where God speaks to you. It is actually the time where the Lord reveals to you. If you are not hearing from God, it is not because God is not speaking. It is because you have refused to ascend up to the mountain.
Remember, they were in a midbar. They were in a wilderness where, and they had two options. They had the option of only eating manna, and they had the option of only, you know, seeing the pillar of cloud and fire, drinking water from the rock, experiencing all this miraculous provision of God. Or they could experience all of that and still ascend the mountain. But the Bible says that the people said to Moses, Moses, we are afraid of this presence. We don't want it. It is too great. It is scary. It is fearful. You go up to the mountain for us. We are just going to sit down here, go and hear what he has to say and come back and tell us. So these guys were in the same situation as Moses. These people were in the same situation, yet what they got out of the situation was completely different. One man was experiencing the power and the sufficiency of God and knowing God like nobody else in history has ever known the Lord. While some other people were building and erecting idols, they were in the same midbar, but the outcome of their midbar was different. Your midbar can destroy you or your midbar can, can pull you closer to God. Your midbar can make you an idolater and a worshiper of men or your midbar can make you someone who comes into revelation and a friend of God. What you do with your midbar is your choice. Right in the middle of the midbar, right in the middle of the wilderness, right in the middle of the season where you are saying to yourself, my God, I feel like I am in between. My God, I feel like I'm making a transition. My God, I don't understand how to, how to um, handle the midbar of my business the midbar of my career. I need you to know that the wilderness is a time of speaking. And right in the middle of that situation, the mountain of God has been set up for you to have encounters with the Lord. It was right in the middle of the midbar that God began to write with his own hands the Ten Commandments. And he began to give it to Moses and said to Moses, go and deliver this to my people. Right in the middle of the time where the people were saying, where is God? Where is God in the midst of this? Another man was receiving direct revelation and instructions from God. What you do with your midbar is your decision. I want you to choose this day that you would ascend the mountain. I don't want you to compromise. I don't want you to compromise. You see, I, I, at some point, as the Lord began to bring me into deliverance, as the Lord began to bring me into the new year and into the new season, not necessarily the calendar year, but the new season of my life, one of the things I had to do last year was to repent because the Lord showed me the compromises I had made in 2021. The Lord showed me the areas in which I compromised in my response to my midbar. The Lord showed me the days where I chose to be angry with the Lord. The Lord showed me the days where I could have gone on my knees to say, thank you, God. But as opposed to say, thank you, God, my heart was filled with complaints. My heart was filled with rage. My heart was filled with anger. The Lord began to show me the days where I could have responded accurately, where I could have spoken up and testified of his goodness. Rather, I kept quiet because I was just like, I refused to agree. I refused to remember how the Lord had led me because I, I, I felt like I needed to show God some way how angry I was that he did not show up for me the way I thought he should show up for me. And the Lord began to speak to me that if I was ever going to come out of my wilderness and enter into my promised land, I had to repent. I had to repent. And so at some point in December, I came into my moment of Kadesh. I came into my moment of Kadosh, a holy moment of crossing. And I realized that the only way I was going to make it on the other side was to embrace God's perspective of my midbar as opposed to my perspective. And I began to call to my memory the goodness of God. I began to call back to my memory how the Lord had led me faithfully all my life. And in the midst of the remembrance of the Lord, I came into repentance. That was how I was able to cross over. But guess what? There are things I could have received. There are blessings I could have come into. There were heights of revelation and deeper engagement with my spirit, with the spirit of God, that I could, I, I could have entered into that I missed. I missed the opportunity because I was consumed by my definition of wilderness. I was consumed by my pain. I was consumed by my wrong expectations of God, and I missed it. That compromise will always cost you. You need to understand where you are. And you need to understand what God is doing with you and what God is doing with you in you. So here is Hagar. 
um, in the wilderness. Please mute your microphone. So here is Hagar um, in the wilderness and the angel of God says to her, where are you going and where are you coming from? You know, um, servant of Sarah, you know, and she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. Now, the angel of God, of course, already knows this answer. The angel of God already knows who she is, where she's coming from, and what she's trying to do. But the question is, does Hagar know it? Does Hagar understand the journey that she's trying to make? When you are in a midbar situation, part of what God begins to do is ask you questions that will make you think that God is foolish. Are you thinking, why, why are you asking me that? Are you not God? You already know. But you see, you must have the right attitude towards the questions of God. Because God is asking you these questions not for his sake. God knows the answers to the questions. But every time that God asks you a question, he's inviting you into a conversation that will birth revelation. He's inviting you into a conversation that would enable you to discover things within yourself that you did not know was there. So he says to her, where are you coming from and where are you going to? But what does the woman reply? She replies, I am fleeing from the face of my mistress. But she never replies where she's going to. Because at that moment, she realizes, I don't know where I'm going to. I'm in a wilderness. I know where I'm coming from, but I don't know where I'm going to. And you see, that in itself is not so bad. Because many times I meet a lot of believers who want to have the complete answer as it pertains to the journey of their lives. But you see, a midbar was constructed for that reason. Sometimes you may even have a picture like the children of Israel. Here is the promised land, but you are not able to enter into it. And then you begin to realize it is not necessarily about the promised land or entering into it. It is about the person that enters the land. It is not about the land because the land is qualified by the people who occupy it. So God uses the midbar to prepare you so that when you enter the land, you can give the land the quality that it should have. So it is not just about entering the land. It is about becoming the person that is worthy to rule in and over the land. So the angel says to her, hey, where, where, where are you going to? He's trying to get her to look inside of her. But there is a word in that Genesis um, um, 16 verse 7 and it is the word shore s-h-u-r he says he found her by the spring on the way to shore the way s-h-u the word s-h-u-r literally means wall so he found her by the spring on the way to wall so literally on the way to nowhere like she's going nowhere and many times when you are in the meat bar it's a time when you feel like i, I feel like i'm going nowhere Everything you are doing, it literally means like you are hitting a brick wall. But that place is still the place of encounter. That place is still the place where the angel of God is coming to meet with you. That place is still the place where the Lord wants to speak with you. He says he found her by the well. Um, and, that, and that word spring that was used right there is the word I am. And the word I am literally in its root word means I. So literally this lady is standing right in the gaze of God. She's standing right in the point where she's in the focus of God. The entire radar of heaven is on her and she does not know it. And I, I'm saying this to you because as the Lord began to speak to me about compromise yesterday, he began to say to me that many people are justifying the wrong that they are doing because of the situation they are going through. And they are saying to themselves, well, you know, life is hard for me. All of these things are happening to me. So, you know, I am justified to act the way I am acting. And God is like, tell them that when you are in a mid bar, you are right in the gaze of God, that the entire host of heaven is looking at you and they are watching you and you are standing by the spring of God and you don't know it. The decisions you make in this time are very critical. Here is Joseph in the season of his mid bar and Joseph did not realize how critical his mid bar was to the destiny of Israel and to the destiny of the world. He didn't recognize it. Not one time did the Bible record that while Joseph was there that the Lord spoke to Joseph. Not one time did the Bible record that the Lord said to Joseph, oh Joseph go to the left or say to, or say to Potiphar or say to Potiphar's wife. No, 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 not one time. 
But Joseph is keeping character, his character, and following the ways of God. But the Bible records that even at that time, when the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph, in the Hebrew inter interpretation, what it says about him was that, as opposed to, and the Lord was with Joseph, when you read it in the Hebrew Bible, what it says was, and the beingness of the being of God was being with Joseph. Let me explain it to you. It says, and the beingness of the being of God was being with Joseph. At that time in the earth, what made God God was that God was with Joseph. So if you were searching for God at any point in time, in that time of that space of 10 years, when God was, when Joseph was in the house of Egypt, if you were looking for God at that point, you would find him with Joseph. The beingness of the being of God, the nature of God, the characteristic of God, the life of God, the personality of God at that time was resident with Joseph. But not one time did it record that the Lord was telling Joseph, okay, go to the hand to Potiphar like this. No. So to Joseph, Joseph would have thought to himself, I'm alone. I'm in this land. Joseph had no promise of tomorrow. All he had was a dream and the teachings of his father. But Joseph held on to that. And Joseph stayed in character. When they came to him and said, you know what, I have a dream. You know, I, 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 this is what I, I, I'm thinking the Lord. He didn't say, please take your dreams away. Please, I don't know. I don't know if God is still working with people. I can't interpret it. No. Joseph stayed in step. And he interpreted their dreams in the midst of his debar. Because the beingness of the being of God was being with Joseph while he was in the wilderness. Even though Joseph may not necessarily have known it. For many of you, what you don't know is that the time of your in quote suffering and the time of your transition is the time when the fullness of God is manifested in you. Is the time when the, you are right in the gaze of God. Haggai might have thought to himself, I am running from my mistress. But what Haggai did not re realize was that she was running into a time where the Lord was going to speak to her concerning the seed she was carrying. She was running into a time of clarity. She was running into a time of redefinition. She was running into a time of realignment. She was running into a time of purification. She was running into a time when God was humbling her so that she might address her destiny accurately. Do not despise your midbar. Do not despise your midbar. Because out of it, the Lord is going to train you and empower you to become the person that you're supposed to be. So here is her at the iron of God, at the spring of God. So in the midst of the mid by the Lord creates just a source of refreshing for her. So that in the midst of it, she could still have some watering. She could still have some refreshing. So every day was not so bad. There were times when she had the well, especially when she was able to say, you know what, I, I had such a powerful dream yesterday. There were times where God was able to uh, give her a miracle in the midst of it. Oh, you lost your job. But in the midst of it, someone said, hey, come and take this $10,000, take this $50,000. Oh, you know, I will help you take care of your kids. I'll, she was still receiving some refreshing in the midst of the wilderness from the spring, which was a product of the focus of God being on her. But you see, the mistake we often make is that at the time when we begin to see the refreshing of God, we think, oh, surely God is refreshing me for the journey ahead. But here is what God said to her. God said to her, um, hey, guy, go back to your mistress, Sarah. Go back to Sarah and humble yourself before her. Because the destiny you are seeking is not in going forward. What you have in front of you is sure a wall. You are going to hit a brick wall. This thing you think is you running away from. This marriage you think, you know what, I can, I, I'm just going to leave because I don't know what's going to come out of this. I can, this marriage you think you are running away from. Where you think you are going, you're going to hit a brick wall, hey guy. Your destiny is in the hand of Sarah. Your destiny is in the hand of the mistress that you think is not treating you right. God said, go back, hey guy, and humble yourself there. Why? Because the midbar is the time of the bar, is the time of the speaking of God. It's the time when the Lord gives you clear cut direction concerning your future. It's the time when the Lord reveals to you and begins to speak to you about the destiny of your seed, about the destiny of your hand, about the destiny of your business, about your future. Because you have come into a season of the bar where the Lord speaks, where the Lord brings alignment. And the Lord said to her, go back and humble yourself in front of Sarah. 
now. The word Sarai actually means, some people interpret it to mean princess. That's the literal meaning. But the actual meaning, when you go down to the roots, is the word to wrestle. To wrestle. And to wrestle, um, you begin to realize that at the end of the day, what are the children of Israel called? The children or the children of God called, they are called Israel. And the word Israel literally means to wrestle with God. So God's people literally become the people who wrestle. The people who are in constant contention with the Lord. The people who are constantly trying to navigate with God. Isn't it amazing that at the end of the day, we are called the, the children of Israel, the ones that wrestle. So it is almost as though God calls us to a place of peniel on a consistent basis. Where you go through the season where you think that, oh, you know what? I know what the Lord wants from me. I'm going on with life. And then you find yourself in a mid-bar season again. And you come into that mid-bar season. And the Lord says, you go back and hold your, humble yourself in front of the wrestler. Go back and hold yourself, humble yourself in front of Sarah. Go back and fight it out. Go back and find a way in humility of spirit and submission to God. Go back and humble yourself in front of the wrestle. I don't know who this word is for today. And you have come into a midbar and you have thought that the way out of the midbar is through the shore. But I'm telling you that you're going to hit a brick wall. The solution you are looking for is not on the other side of the midbar. The solution you are looking for is in you going back to Sarai and wrestling. And humbling yourself and fight the good fight. And fight it out and fight in prayer and fight in revelation and fight in understanding and fight in humility and fight in grace and fight in peace. After the Lord has purified you, go back and wrestle it out. So it is not about the direction of Canaan. It is about the direction of God in your heart. It is not about where is Canaan? Is it here or is it there? That's not the point. The point is, can you locate Canaan inside of you? Can you locate the promise of God? Can you wrestle? Can the things inside of you wrestle until you arrive at the fullness of the nature of God? Can you wrestle against the things that want you to compromise, Hagar? Can you wrestle? Can you wrestle until you arrive at the fullness and the goodness of God? You know, what you are trying to leave is not necessarily where you're going. So many times we are focused on what we are trying to leave and not focus on where we should be going. Where you should be going is, is not necessarily the opposite of what you are leaving. It's just the better, um, a much better place or a much better appearance of what you are leaving. So sometimes the Lord is saying, go back and wrestle it out. You need strength. You need to wrestle. You need to fight. Because what looks like a desert place to you, what looks like a dry place to you, it's a time where the beingness of the being of God is actually being with you. The fullness of the nature of God, the fullness of the personality of God, the fullness of the grace of God is resident with you. How come you do not know it? This morning, I want you to ask the Lord to speak to you. Because at the end of it, or Hagar arrived at a point where she said, my goodness, I have been right in the eye of God. And I have been in the presence of the one who sees me. I have been in the presence of El Rohi, the one who sees me. El Rohi, the one who sees me. She said, because in, before I was in the house of Sarah, and I felt unseen, I felt unloved. I felt unnoticed. I just felt like I was journeying on my own. I felt like I was suffering on my own. And yet, in the midst of that, I thought God would have liberated me. He still sent me into a midbar. But in the midst of the midbar, she finally realized that the midbar was the time when the eyes of God was upon her. And she redefined her situation. And she said, no, I am not distressed. I am not in trouble. I am not abandoned. I am not forgotten. I am actually under the banner of el the one who sees me. This morning, I want you to begin to ask the Lord, to give you the right focus in the midst of your situation, to help you to understand where you are at, to help you not to misplace the experience that heaven is giving to you in the midst of the wilderness. I want you to ask the Lord that the Lord will begin to teach you
that the Lord will begin to show you how to respond in the midst of the season. Ask the Lord that the experience of the wilderness will not be wasted, that God will give you the grace and God will give you the strength to be able to um, respond to him accurately, to be able to search for the right things, to be able to ask for the right things. Ask the Lord to give you a desire and a hunger that causes you to ascend the mountain even whilst you are in the midst of it. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord. Tell God, Father, I need you to help me. Father, I need you to show me. Father, I want to hear the words you are speaking because you have said that the mid bar is the time of the, the bar, is the time of the speaking. So God, my wilderness does not represent dryness. It's actually the speakings of God. It's actually the speakings of God. So Father, speak to me. So Father, speak to me. So Father, reveal to me. Oh, Shakela Basuka Ekatali Balamata. Help me to rightly appropriate what you are doing in my life. Help me to not to miss it, my God. Father, I repent of the times when I have said you have abandoned me. I repent of the days when I have said you have forgotten me, O oh God. And I miss it that printed the season of wilderness in my life. But my God, this morning I submit to your teaching. I submit to your revelation. I ask, oh God, that you should show me, you show me the fullness of what you are doing and the fullness of what you are working out in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, ke ramo suke le batala ba. Oh, macha de breketi la ba kuse ke de basuda. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want you to ask the Lord to grant you the grace to wrestle. Ask you to grant you the grace to wrestle. Here was um 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 Jacob about to go and face Esau, and Jacob was afraid. And Jacob came into a season of Peniel and a place called Peniel. And the Bible says that in that day, that the angel of God, as opposed to coming to give Jacob a shortcut out of the situation, as opposed to coming to tell Jacob, Jacob, I'm going to give you strength and I'm going to make you powerful, so that in case Esau attacks you, you can attack Esau back. As opposed to God doing that for Jacob. What does the Lord do? The Bible says right there in the midst of Jacob's agitation, Jacob's fear, that the angel of God came and he wrestled with Jacob. The angel of God came and he fell forth with Jacob. I'm sure Jacob was saying, God, what are you doing? God, what are you doing? Why are you wrestling with me? Why are you fighting with me? Why are you doing this at this time? What I need for you is to rise up and defend me. What I need for you is to give me strength to be able to fight my brother, to be able to protect my family. Rather, you are wrestling with me. I am not the offender, God. I am the oppressed. I am the one that is, is trying to make sense out of this. But yes, you are wrestling with me. But what he did not understand, what Jacob did not understand, was that his deliverance and his liberation was not in fighting Esau. It was in fighting the Esau within him. It was in fighting his, he, he, the things within him that were not of God. Fighting his need to be a supplanter. Fighting his need to just, you know, go around situations and never really deal with them. God needed to fight all of that out of him. And pull all of that out of him. Because his surviving Esau was not about a battle or a physical war. Surviving Esau was him becoming a different man. Because the moment Esau saw him, Esau was like, you know what? This is not the brother I need to know. Something has changed in this guy. Many of you, you are searching for miracles. Many times you are searching for the hand of God. You are searching for the intervention of God. You are searching for that big contract. You are searching for, you know, things to happen. You want the next move. You want the next career change. But what you don't understand is that it is not in the moves you make. It is in the person you become. God had to wrestle with Jacob in the midst of his midbar. Because the moment Jacob transitioned from Jacob into becoming Israel, the favor of God followed him. The hand of God followed him. Multiplication and increase followed him. What you need is a wrestling. What you need is a wrestling. In the midst of the wrestling, what happened to Jacob? He came out on that side a humble man. Because Jacob could no longer... Please mute your seven, microphone. Because Jacob could no longer walk the way he used to walk anymore. Jacob could no longer go the way he used to go anymore. The Bible records that Jacob then began to lean on his scepter and leap, you know, while he was walking. So if you looked at Jacob in the physical, he looked limited. If you looked at Jacob in the physical, you say, ah, where has her fight gone to? Where has this fight gone to? Look, deal with the matter, show them. 
But Jacob looks like a lower version of himself. Mm -hmm. But in the realm of the spirit, Jacob was a greater person than he was before. Jacob began to lean on the scepter and the scepter is God. The scepter is Christ. He began to lean on Christ for everything. He began to bend his knee before God. He began to come into alignment and submission. The compromises that Jacob used to make that limited him, he no longer made those compromises. Why? Because he did not even have the strength to make them anymore. This time he needed to depend on God every day. Your midbar is to produce out of you the prince of Israel that you're supposed to be. Because what will cause Esau to seize his hand of oppression from you is when he sees you coming and he sees the glory of God and risen upon you and he sees Christ shining out of you. Listen, allow the wrestle. Allow the wrestle. Allow the wrestle. Let God contend with you so that what God wants to produce out of you will come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray over your Penwell situation. I pray over your Midbar situation. I pray that the Spirit of God will give you the grace to trust the wrestling of the Lord. I pray that as the angel of the Lord said to Haggai, go back and wrestle. I pray that God will put faith in the heart of somebody today who was about to give up. Somebody who was about to throw away the promises of God. Somebody who was about to make a prison break out of the cells of Egypt because the person is thinking, surely this cannot be the Lord. I pray that God will put his hand upon such a Joseph this morning. And I pray that God will give you the grace and the strength to wrestle. God will show you how to fight it out. God will show you how to trust in him again. God will give you the capacity to believe him again. God we give you the grace to wait one more day for his promise. I pray that in the midst of it, you will not miss the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus. You know, there is something very significant that um, I, but, but that I want you to note um, about compromise. Because when, when the Lord began to speak to the children of Israel, the Lord began to say to them in Exodus chapter 20, he says, I am the Lord your God who has delivered you from the captivity, from the bondage of Egypt. I am the Lord your God who led you and I delivered you from the bondage of Egypt. He says now, because God was about to give them the 10 commandments, God said to them, first of all, he said, hey, listen, I am the Lord your God who has done this. God starts this event. He says, I delivered you. I delivered you from slavery. Now here are my commandments. Why did God first make that introduction to them? Because you see, in the midst of the Midbar, God begins to redefine the boundary lines. God begins to, you know, give you new uh, a new protocols of operation in the spirit. God begins to tell you, hey, here are the sanctifications that I want from you. Here is how I need you to separate yourself. Here is how, here are the ways in which you should walk and here are the ways in which you should not walk. And if you're a person that does not understand how God operates, that does not understand the blessedness of the laws of God, you will think that God is constraining you and God is limiting you. But God began this conversation of the Ten Commandments with them by saying to them, listen to me, I am the Lord your God that has led you in the midst of this midbar. And the reason why I brought you into this midbar is because I wanted to prove you and to try you and to give you authority. But I also, you must remember that I first of all delivered you from the bondage of Egypt. So me giving you the laws is not because I'm trying to bring you into another bondage, but I'm about to sustain your liberty. That is the purpose of the laws. God introduced himself first of all to them by saying, I am the God who delivered you. So please do not misinterpret my laws as a form of bondage. See my laws for what they truly are. The ways in which you can sustain your liberty. The ways in which your liber the liberty you have received can be translated to the second, to the third, and to the fourth generation. Why am I saying this to you this morning? It's because I perceive that there's somebody in the midbar, a part of what God is doing for you, as opposed to giving you house and car houses and cars and all the things you want. Rather, God is giving you a new set of laws and a new set of protocols and a new set of ways of operation. And God is saying, no, you can't do that. No, you can't be in this relationship. No, you can't have that conversation. No, you cannot break this boundary line. No, you cannot compromise here. And it's almost as though God is dishing out laws and rules and regulations to you. And you're saying to yourself, what is this about? The Lord is saying to you, listen, this is my personality. I am your deliverer. I did not deliver you from Egypt for you to become a slave. I am giving you these laws for your preservation, for your sustenance. Do not misinterpret the laws of God. But it began by saying, Hear, O Israel, 
hear. Why? Because in the midst of a midbar, God is always speaking. But can you hear him? Can you hear him? Jesus, they asked Jesus, what are the greatest commandments? He said, hey, yeah, oh Israel, the Lord your God is one God, for you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. He began by saying, hear, oh Israel, this is the greatest commandment that you hear, that you hear, that your ears are open to hear the whisperings of God that comes in the wind of the wilderness, that comes in the wind of the debar, that comes in the wind of the place of isolation and separation. Hear, oh Israel, hear, oh Israel, hear, oh Israel. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, that God will open your ears, that you will not be overtaken by the appearance of isolation and dryness and separation. Mm -hmm. But I pray that you will hear the voice of God that comes to you in the midst of the midbar, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. because midbar means to speak. It is the place of the speaking of God. I pray that you will not miss the articulation of the spirit. I pray that you will not miss the translation of the spirit. I pray that you will not miss the instructions of the spirit. I pray that you will not miss the deliberations of the spirit. It. in yes. the name of the Lord Jesus but in the yes. midst of this season I pray that God will open up your heart and God will raise your eyes and God will cause you to see the conversations that are had of you in the heavenlies in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray that God will give you the capacity to push behind you to push past you the seeming struggles and realize the blessedness of the dealings of God in your life in the name Amen. of Jesus Amen. Job was going through what Job would call a midbar, a time of separation, a time when he didn't have the things he used to have, a time when it seemed like everything was taken away from him. And there was a temptation for Job to compromise. They said to Job, Job, curse God and die. His wife, the ones he was intimate with, said to him, just curse God and die. It is better for you to die. It is better for you to leave this earth. It is better for you to leave that country. It is better for you to leave that situation. Even if you come out of the will of God, at least you are saving yourself the pain. Listen to me. The escape from pain is not a proof that you are in the will of God. The escape from pain is not a proof that the hand of God has delivered you. Sometimes the will of God is in the midst of the pain. Sometimes the will of God is in the midst of the struggle. She said to him, curse God and die. Just escape. It was a cheap escape. It was a temptation for him to compromise. Listen, Job said concerning himself, he says, in the days where the mysteries of God were on the top of the tabernacle, were in the top of the place where I worshipped, Job was a man that was born out of revelation. The thing that made Job great, the thing that made Job separate was that he saw God in his time, the way that nobody else saw God. How could he compromise on revelation? You cannot unsee what you have seen. You cannot or know who you know. Job was like, you are asking me to compromise on the knowledge of God. I can't do that. I know who the Lord is. So even though my body is in pain, yet I know who God is. Listen to me. Do not compromise on the knowledge of God. In the midst of your debar, in the midst of your midbar, guide the revelation of God that you know. The revelation of God that you have. Guide it in the midst of that season. But you see, what Job did not realize was that what was going on was that in the heavens, God was bragging. There were conversations about Job. There were conversations about God's, Job's dedication and commitment to God. What he did not realize was that God was speaking well of him. But in the physical, he was going through a midbar. That was what Job did not realize. I need you to appropriate correctly what is happening in your life. Now, the last thing I want to say before we go is that it is amazing how what we call the Torah, which is um, the word of the Lord, which is translated as the word of the Lord, which is from Genesis to Deuteronomy, the Torah, the books of God, the teachings of God, the word of God, which means to hit the mark. I've shared this before. The Torah literally means to hit the mark. And the word um, for God, which is the word Yahweh. Um, Yahweh is a verb. Yahweh is not a noun. Yahweh is an action word. So God to the children of Israel is a verb. He's not just a person. He's an action. He's a movement. He's the substance of life and the sustainer of life. He's the one that causes the activities of creation to go on. So God is a verb. Yahweh is a verb. Now, because Yahweh is a verb, he's constantly moving. And seen means to miss the mark. 
Torah means to hit the mark. Yahweh means an ever moving mark. So if you miss what Yahweh is doing and where Yahweh is going at any point in time, that means you have sinned. And do you remember God said to them, I brought you into this midbar so that I may test you, so that I may humble you, so that I will reveal what is in your heart, so that I will qualify you, so that you will not miss me. Joseph, don't miss what I am doing. Now, how are you going to hit the mark? It is through the Torah. But it is amazing how three and a half of the books or three and a half of the Torah is given to them in the midst of the wilderness. The very thing that they need to hit the mark, the very thing that they need to achieve destiny, the very thing that they need to acquire and become the people that God has called them to be and to hit the mark that is their way, to not sin, but to be able to do and become everything God has called them to do and become, they get those instructions in the wilderness. Do not play down on your wilderness season. Do not play down on the instructions that God releases to you in the midst of the Midbar because it constitutes the bulk of your Torah, your Torah, that you need to hit the mark with God, that you need to achieve destiny, that you need to arrive at being the person that God has called you to be. Do not miss the mark. As God began to speak to them concerning who he wanted them to be, one of the things that God said to them is, Walk before, he said, make sure that there is no idol. You must not bring any idol. You shall not have any other God before me. In Genesis 20 verse 3, he said, you shall not have any other God before me. And I remember saying to the Lord, I should not have any other God before you, but can I have another God after you? Like, what does that mean? But the literal interpretation of what God said is you should not have any God in front of my face. Do not bring any idol in front of my face. So basically, if here is, here am I, here is God. God is saying, do not put anything between me and you. That is one of the foremost destruction that God gives to them in the Midbar. Do not put anything between, don't let anything block me from you. Don't let me ever have to look through something else before I can see you. And don't ever let anything be what stands in your way of seeing me. Now, he's, he called it idols. He called it gods. But what are the things that stand between us and God? Sometimes it is our ambition. It is our lust. It is our fear. It is our, our, our need for, um, for greatness. It is our need for self-sufficiency. Like, you know what? I don't need God to do that for me. I can do it myself. All these things standing between us and God. And God is like, don't let anything. Don't let anything. It doesn't have to be built as a statue. But there are all kinds of idols that we have erected that are not physical statues, but they are standing between us and God. So this was the first, this was one of the commandments God gave to them. Do not let anything block us, block you from me. So I want you to make that prayer and say, God, in the midst of all of this, I want to see you clearly. In the midst of all of this, I dethrone anything that stands in the way that makes it impossible for me to see you for who you are. Anything inside of me, oh God, that stands in the way of me having clarity concerning you. Father, take it out of me in the name of Jesus. Father, make my eyes clear. My God, make my eyes clear. Father, make my eyes clear. Today, oh God, I uproot and I remove, oh God, the thing that, 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 that I am compromising with, the compromises I am making concerning you. Father, I take it out of my life in the name of Jesus. I declare that my vision is clear. I shall not put any other God before your face. I shall not put any other God before your face. Because Lord Jesus, I want to be able to receive, oh God, the commandments that I need to hit the back. I want to be able to receive the commandments I need to hit the back. So Lord, I bring down every other idol, oh God, that I have put before your face in the name of Jesus, so that I may see you clearly, so that I may hear you clearly in the name of Jesus. Nothing else before your face. Nothing else before your face. Nothing else before your face. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.
yes. And you know, these idols of compromise, sometimes they don't have to be things that are obviously bad. Sometimes it could be your children. And so it's not things that are inherently bad in themselves, but uh -huh. it is just what you appropriate to it. Are you giving it the place of God? Are you giving it the place of God? Are you giving it all your heart, your emotion, your dedication, your commitment, as opposed to seeing God first? Are you seeing those things first? Do they take all your passion? Do they take all your desire? Do they take everything from you? When fear creeps in, are you more afraid than you, than you are actually able to see the power and the grace of God? When certain people speak or people anger you, are you taking more by that anger than you are able to see the power and the revelation of God? Do not bring anything before my face. Give unto God what is God's. Attend to the affairs of life, but give unto God what is God's. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That as you go through your midbar season, that it will not be a waste. Amen. That as the angel of the Lord meets with you, I pray that he would reveal to you and he will give you the instructions you need for the next phase of life. Amen. I pray that in this season, that the Lord will begin to speak clearly to you concerning the plans that he has for you concerning the things that he wants to do in you mm -hmm. in the name of the lord jesus Amen. i pray that in this season you will receive instructions for the future Amen. you will receive directions for the future Amen. you will receive a clear word concerning the future Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. thank you precious holy spirit thank you lord. thank you god thank you god. receive from you in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. God bless Amen. you. God bless God you. God strengthen you. Amen. God enlighten you. Um, Amen. God give you the grace um, to walk the walk and to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Um, Amen. And I pray that in this season, that even your wilderness, you will not compromise in the midst of it. Amen. But you will see the blessedness of God even Amen. in the midst of your wilderness. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yeah, God Pastor Stephen. Over to you.